behold a marvellous unfinished creation that is my base door. Although it's not the finished project, it's not decorated properly, but it kind of works. Sort of. I mean, it only opens one block on either side and we've got this incredibly crazy uh, double pinder piston extender thing going on at the bottom, but it actually... Oh man, <laughs> the spaghetti redstone for this is incredible. I did this on a live stream. People watched me struggle and basically it's a block swapper. So when I activate this, it go... Oh geez, you can't really see it from here, but it's a total nightmare. It works, but it's not really what I wanted, you see. Jeez, I can't get out. Help. <laughs> Help. Yeah, it's not really what I wanted. I wanted a nice, big, impressive door. And it opens wide enough. And the reason I want it to open more than one block wide is I want to be able to come here with things like horses and boats and things like that in case I'm uh, collecting anything from the world. But it's... Um, yeah, it's a little bit unimpressive, isn't it? It's a little bit unimpressive. However, thanks to the lovely peeps on my Discord who watched me struggle through the stream to create this thing... I've got some new solutions to show you, but unfortunately, I'm going to have to go to my test world to show you them. And here we are, and this is that block swapper thing I tried to show you, and if I activate it, you can see exactly what it's doing. So the idea was it was flush with the floor, and it would remove those two blocks using fancy piston things, and I designed this on stream, and as a result, it's a total mess of spaghetti redstone, but it works. But it's not really ideal. I mean, what would be more ideal would be something like this that used slime blocks and just a normal piston extender. And then I could have blocks on either side and it would be nice and wide and that would be great. So, yeah, that's something I could do. However, the thing that I don't like the most is the fact that my door only opened one block, block wide. So, again, like I say, the clever people on my Discord sent me some designs because I was struggling to come up with a tileable double pin piston horizontal extender which is exactly what this is and when you do it it's great but because of the redstone torches there's a bit of a delay with the blocks going out which i don't want i want them all to go out at the same time so i put my thinking cap on this morning and i came up with this which is basically exactly the same thing but well, with a lot more spaghetti redstone going on in order to make sure that we're using glass blocks to transfer the redstone signal rather than redstone torches so there's no delay so that when I flick this button, well, you can see it all goes out at the same time and it all comes in at the same time, which is nice. The problem with this design, though, however, is the fact that, you know, these blocks here, it doesn't really give us much room. It doesn't give us much wiggle room at all. So, uh... So then I designed this one, which gives us a little bit more room. It gives us a little bit more room on that side. It does exactly the same thing, but it's even more spaghetti redstone that I've got to somehow try and hide somewhere in my base. But the great thing about this is I can bring these slime blocks and these honey blocks out quite a substantial distance and they'll still work. And that means that I can, although my door's technically only going to open four blocks in the middle, it's better than in opening just two blocks in the middle. So if I do that, nothing happens. I've I've put too how have I put too much strain on it? Jeez. Okay. Let's let's take that off a little bit. Okay. Uh, let's try that again. There we go. So yeah, so it'll open two blocks on either side. So if I imagine I had this on the other side as well. Let's just throw some blocks in here quickly. We still need a one block gap in the middle because my hallway is off center, but that would come across and then there would be this one on this side. So from the outside, if we get another row of these things here, that would be the width of the door there like that. And then both of those sides would open up to that point there. So these would be gone, which is a nice big wide opening. And then all I've got to do is get rid of these blocks that will be in the middle. Those ones there. Which I can do with the uh, the new one. Although still, it's only going to be the bottom two. But with a, with a rather compact thing like this. In fact, even more compact. Like this. Yeah, I, I can do it. I think I can do it better, basically. Is what I'm saying. Jeez. So if I have that there and that there. Right. That's going to pop up through the floor. And that will be in the middle of this thing here. So if you imagine the slime blocks will be there and then the other blocks will be there. The only problem with that is now, though, there's a big problem here is when this comes out like this, 
that's fine, but then it's all going to stick together and cause big problems, which is not ideal. So, we can't do that, sadly. What I'll have to do is off-center this somehow or other so that it's it's not in the way. And we need to off-center it to a point where nothing's going to stick together, which means actually probably having it a couple of blocks back like that, which will kind of be a, a bit weird with my door, making my door incredibly wide. So then when that comes together like that, no one's going to... Oh, jeez, it's all broken. It's all totally broken. How have I done this? What's going on here? Oh, okay. All right, I understand. So yeah, when my door closes, from one side of it, you're going to be able to see the slime blocks here. So it's not ideal. It's really not ideal. What I'd much, much prefer would be... Uh, no, I was going to say... I could... Ooh. Ooh. I, mm, I don't know if I can get away with it. I think there'll be too many blocks. But what I could almost do... If I put... Oh, jeez. Let's get rid of all of this. One moment, please. If I was to put slime blocks there like that, and then honey blocks there like that, I think that's going to be too many for the pistons to push, but we'll find out. Let's have a look. Yeah, it doesn't like it at all. Oh, that sucks. I guess we could get rid of those blocks there, because they're not required, which means we could also get rid of those blocks there, because they're not required. And then, will it work? It will not. Because we've got... 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 on each one, which it just doesn't like. Oh, man. And then if we did that, then we could have had hoodie blocks in the middle, you see, and then it wouldn't have all got stuck together. Oh, jeez. There's, there's always something, isn't there? What? And if I get rid of those to bring the actual number of blocks down to a reasonable number, then uh, when it opens up, it's going to look really, really, really dumb. Still, it was still won't open up. What? Oh, there. We <laughs> yeah. You see what I mean? Pistons, pistons are rubbish, bro. So I could just have a lovely slime and honey block door, I guess. <laughs> and then on the top, I could pull it down. I could pull these ones down from the top and those ones down from the bottom, and I could get the whole door open. But yeah. I, I can't actually then stick any blocks on here. So what about this solution then? So we've got a whole bunch of spaghetti over there, a whole bunch of spaghetti over there, and then when I push the button, it does come in together and give us a one wide middle. However, then when I take it away, the, the blocks swap to the other side, which isn't a big problem. That's not a big problem at all. But it kind of... Yeah. Uh, yes, <laughs> the swapped again now. It's a bit weird, isn't it, that the, the blocks are never always going to be on the same side, which I guess isn't the end of the world. But I also kind of like don't like the fact that you see the honey blocks and slime blocks, but I don't think I'm going to get away from that. I don't know. I don't know what the best thing to do here. At least the door opens a lot wider than it did. You've got a, lot, a much bigger door opening than there was. I mean, the door does open off center, but that's that's not as bad as what we've got going on before. And we can make this really tall, so it's quite, you know, impressive. I just don't know about these blocks that keep swapping from one side to the other. I'd love it if I could make, like, if I could make it so that when it opened, those were like that and those were like that. That would be great. But it's not going to uh, allow me to do that, obviously, with the slime blocks and things, because that's not how slime blocks work. Ah, oh, jeez. But yeah, I think I'm onto something. But there is a whole bunch of redstone <laughs> going on here that makes all of this work, which could be a bit of a nightmare trying to disguise in my base. Oh, jeez. Okay, let's go back to Truly Bedrock. So back on Truly Bedrock, this is the current state of affairs, as you saw at the beginning of the video. And if I open that up, it's great. But where am I going to put all of the redstone? Oh, oh, the wandering traders here. Hello, sir. Nice to see you. How's it going? What have it? Oh, you've got some ice. That's nice, isn't it? Oh, what a lovely day it is. I don't want to. No, I'm trying to eat, mate. Hmm. Joe! Oh, dear. I sneezed and blew into shreds. Oh, now his llama's spitting at me, so you're going to have to go. Oh, dear. His llama's died and one of their heads fell off. This is such a shame. Yeah, so where am I going to hide all of that redstone? I can't put it here on the outside because that would be silly. At the moment, it's nice and neat because we don't have double pin piston extenders. We only have single ones. So it all fits nicely at the side there, which is absolutely fantastic. 
the only other place I could put it would be in here. And I'd have to... I mean, there's nothing behind those walls, so I could try and squeeze it behind all of those walls. But then I've got to try and squeeze it up to this redstone here, which could make our, our hallway very, very narrow. Hmm. Oh, jeez. But then it would be better than that. Although I'm really proud of my little block swappery thing. I don't really want to get rid of that because I like it. But uh, I guess I don't have much of a choice. Oh, jeez. Hmm. 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 Oh, man. Okay. I think the first thing to do is actually try a proof of concept on this side, which means I'm going to have to dig out all behind this wall in order to try and fit in all of that redstone, which is going to be absolutely marvellous. And you get to come along for the journey with me because this is what we do in my videos now. But you've been doing cuts and stuff in this video? Well, I know I've done some, but I'm going to try very hard to not do any more because, well, I've got to record a lot of videos today. And it's going to be difficult to do that if I keep stopping and starting this one and fiddling with it off camera and stuff like that. So I'm going to crack on. That being said, there is something I want to tell you guys about, which if you are following my channel, you may already know about. You might have already seen me put videos about it. You might have seen me talk about them in the Discord. But peeps, I've been making add-ons again. I've been at it. I've been playing with the new... Well, I say it's new. It's relatively new. Beta APIs, which is basically a scripting tool for add-ons. So rather than doing it in the good old-fashioned way of fiddling with entity properties and making custom items and custom uh, blocks and things like that, this actually allows you to code JavaScript into the game, which allows you to do some incredible things with some of the functions that they've given you, including giving the player the offhand ability, which I've done, making a sorting system so that you can sort your chests and inventory more easily which i've done a percentage player sleep which i've done and even a block stats one which i've done so what i'm going to do now because i'm such a lovely fellow is i'm going to go hop into a test world and show you all of these new features oh amazing that does unfortunately mean closing down my game and installing the latest version of Minecraft because on Truly Bedrock we're still on 1.19.63.1 and yes, if you're on PC, you can use my version switcher to do exactly that. And now that the game's loaded, I'm going to load in a bunch of these ones. Bear in mind, these are my work in progress ones rather than ones I've actually released, but I'm going to add them all on and see how it all works. Let's do this. Make sure I'm not on multiplayer. don't want anyone sneaking into my world. Make sure I've got the experiments on because they all need to have... Where's the experiments? Jeez. Beta APIs. Oh, we've got more on, but I only need the beta APIs one. And let's click play. So I guess the one you're probably going to be interested in most is the offhand one, which I just happen to have already enabled. As you can see, I've got some wood in my offhand and a torch in my main hand. And if I triple crouch... In fact, I've got it set to double crouch at the moment. I can put torches in my offhand, which means... If I'm doing something like mining and I've got a pickaxe, I can just go and place, place some torches down from my offhand while still doing all of the mining, which is wonderful. Or maybe I've got some blocks in my offhand and I want to build and place blocks at the same time. I can do that now because offhand works in Bedrock Edition, peeps, thanks to my add-on. And what's this I have in my pocket? I have a piece of paper that says sorter on it. Let's go over to a chest, ideally one without tons of stuff in it, or maybe one with tons of stuff in it. Who knows? So let's go over to a chest and click on the chest, or in fact, I can just click on the ground with it. And I've got some options. I've got refill or sort, which allows me to actually sort my player inventory. So let's just look at it like right now. It's a bit of a jumbled mess. And if I do sort player inventory, then it's all nicely sorted, which is lovely. Now, let's say, right, I've got some torches on my hotbar, but they've just about run out. But I know I've got more in my inventory. I can go to refill hotbar from player and it'll put them on my hotbar, which is absolutely fantastic. Or I could even drop all of my inventory onto the floor in case I didn't need it. Maybe I was stood above a hopper or something like that. Or what if I just wanted to drop some items from my inventory? Maybe I just want to get rid of all of this cobblestone wall for a moment. There we go. That's all out of my inventory now. What if, though, I want to put all of the stuff from the main part of my inventory, all of this wood, for instance, into this chest? I can go to player inventory to chest. Notice it doesn't affect my hotbar, but all of those items are now in this chest, which is fantastic. And what if, right, this chest had a bunch of warped planks in it, 
but I've got warp planks in my hot bar and I want to just refill it without opening the chest. I can go to refill hot bar from chest and lo and behold, look, they're now on my hot bar instead of in the chest. Or, you know, what if they're in my inventory and I want to do that? I can go to uh, refill, refill player inventory from chest, click submit, and there we go. They're now in my inventory. The other thing I can do is I can go to this and I can go to this and I can tick them all. So it will sort the chest inventory, sort my inventory, refill all of my stuff. And there we go. That's done that. Everything's nice and sorted. Everything's good. The other thing I can do is I can say, right, I just want to pick these torches and put those in the chest. In fact, I didn't want to do that. I actually want those torches back. There we go. And that will bring them back to my inventory. And if you are a sneaky admin, if you've got an admin tag, you can go on here. You can click allow sneak interact and allow shulker box inception. So clicking submit, if I allow sneak interact, that means although I can't click on anything on the floor like it, I can click on any inventory if I'm sneaking and then it will open the sort menu without me needing this sorter. And the shulker box inception one, well, let's just say uh, there's one over here I'm sure I made earlier. Yes, all of these shulker boxes, this shulker box here is full of shulker boxes that are full of shulker boxes. So what you do is you grab yourself a shulker box, you go to a shulker box and you say, okay, sort, transfer, and then it shows you undyed shulker box, put it in there and it is now in that chest. Now, if you don't have that toggled on, because obviously it's a little bit game breaking and the admins need to be able to say whether you're allowed to do that, then you click on the chest and you go to choose from it. It won't actually let you. It's not going to say, it's not going to give you the option to transfer the shulker boxes. But if you go to the sorter options and allow the shulker boxes, then you can choose to put them in there, which is absolutely fantastic, which means you can have shulker boxes inside of shulker boxes inside of shulker boxes, just like we've got here. Jeez. The other two add-ons I still need to update for 1.80, so now I'm going to have to open up 1.19.73. And now with a couple of items in my hand, one called Blocks Broken and one called Blocks Placed, if I click on those, you can see that a lot of blocks have been broken. There's a leaderboard for all of the blocks that's been broken in the world, and if I break some more, you will see my score changes and Blocks Placed as well. Well, there's none at the moment, so let's go in here, place a whole bunch of blocks, and then go to Blocks Placed, and you'll see I've placed 11. And if I go into the chat and do dash pps help you'll see we've got a percentage player sleep on here which is absolutely fantastic now what i can do with the bed in my hand is sneak and click and it will open up a slider and i can set the percentage of players required to be asleep in order to pass the night and then i can save that or i can type in the chat pps say 40 percent for instance and it will set it to 40 and now 40% of the players in the world will need to be in bed in order to pass the night. Now, there's only me in here, so, you know, it's not going to really do anything because there's only me. But if there were more players, then this is a very useful thing to be able to do. Anyway, like I say, back to 1.19.63 and back onto Truly Bedrock, where we've still got a whole bunch of digging to do and it's bedtime and it's dark and I'm stuck. Oh, jeez, quick, let me get to my bed, mate, before all the things come and get me. Looks like my pickaxe needs fixing as well. Oh, jeez. I don't really want to destroy this door. I really like it. Well, I don't like this door. I'm being honest. <laughs> if I'm being honest, I don't like it at all. But it, it took me a long time. So I'm, you know, and I was very impressed with myself for doing it all on stream. It's not easy doing redstone on stream, you know, especially complicated stuff like block swapping things that you've never built before. So I was impressed with my little self. Um, but yeah, it's got to go. It's got to go, sadly. Jeez. Now. What have I got to tell you guys about? Uh, not a great deal this weekend. It was the bank holiday uh, weekend in the UK, which basically is a, a it's like a national holiday where everybody's off school and doesn't have to go to work for a day, which was nice on the Monday. And that meant that I could take Oliver, who's my uh, my son, to the cinema to see the new Mario movie. And that Mario movie's got some very mixed reviews. A lot of people I've heard talking about it says, oh, the story, there's no story to it. It's not very good, this, that, and the other. We absolutely loved it. It was great. It was an absolutely wonderful movie. And I thoroughly re recommend to anybody that has any interest in Mario or, you know, Nintendo to just go and watch it and enjoy it. There's, don't have any high expectations of, oh, it's going to be the best story in the world. But it's it's Mario and it's full of references and it was funny. And yeah, we, we really enjoyed it. So uh, that was nice. And uh, and now it's just, yeah, it's time, time to do dig in. Jeez. Now, speaking of add-ons, 
Another add-on I have in mind that I would think I can do and I'd like to do is a sweeping edge add-on. Because in Minecraft Bedrock Edition, we still don't have the sweeping edge enchantment, which means that we're just stuck to hitting one mob at a time with our swords, which is fine in most circumstances. But it would be nice to be able to, you know, come across a big old pile of mobs and give them all a bit of a whacking at the same time. So I can do the hitting more mobs at once thing absolutely fine. But unfortunately, it's not possible to me to be able to create custom enchantments in Minecraft Bedrock Edition. So I'd have to think of a different way in order to get the enchantment or effectively something on your sword in order for it to detect that you're using sweeping edge and i don't want it to just be really easy because obviously if you're enchanting things or if you're using enchanted books there's a chance based thing and it's you know there's, there's it's, it's not exactly difficult but there is chance required and levels required and things like that so i'm thinking well i can detect what level the player is and i can allow like recipes and things to be used Perhaps I could make it, and I don't know whether this is possible, but perhaps I could make it so, let's say the player went to a smithing table and put a diamond in and their sword, and they had, let's say, 20 levels, then it would give them sweeping edge. Now, I don't know if that's actually possible, and the way I think I would put the sweeping edge thing on the tool so you know you had it would be to add lore which is, you know, when you hover over an item and sometimes there's a little bit of text underneath it if you're playing an adventure map or something. Now, you can use that and you can detect that with these beta API systems. So I'll be able to detect if it said sweeping edge in the law on your thing and then apply that to the, the weapon, which would be absolutely fantastic. So that's a really nice way of doing it. It's just what method I go through to actually put the law onto that item. And thinking about it, the way that I just described probably wouldn't actually work because I couldn't, I've got no control over what comes out of the crafting table other than you, or the enchantment table other than using a recipe, which doesn't, I don't think, maybe it does allow you to add lore. I don't know. So there's things to think about. But as I like to ask you guys to write comments, what do you think? Would you, first of all, like Sweeping Edge in Minecraft Bedrock Edition? And what do you think is a reasonable way of getting that lore on your item? Maybe there was a way to, oh, I don't know, there, there must be a nice, easy in-game way that doesn't involve running commands or writing things in chat that we can just use as a normal style of interaction in order to do that. Now, I wonder, and I don't know if this is possible, but I wonder if it's possible to make an enchantment table recipe. So you could perhaps put an already enchanted sword or a non-enchanted sword on an enchantment table. Instead of using lapis, maybe throw a diamond in there and then that would give you sweeping edge. But again, I don't know if I'd be able to detect the actual player level at that point, because that's just using a recipe file. So there's lots of things to consider, but I'd be really interested in your guys' feedback. And while you're down there fiddling around in the comments, there's a nice like button kicking around in that area, and there's a subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. And also, if you like those add-ons that I showed you earlier, and you're thinking, where do I get those from, Foxy No Tail? You can download them all from foxynotail.com for free. They do work on realms and servers and mobile. If you're using the offhand one, you do need to be using the new touch control system in order to make that work. But they all work on mobile, on realms, on servers and on phones and consoles if you can get them on there. Uh, so, yeah, there you go. You're welcome. You're welcome, peeps. Now, if only I had my chest sorting add on on Truly Bedrock right now, that would be very, very useful for me. But I don't. What we do have now is a big old hole to the side of here where we can start thinking about how it might be possible to actually wire this redstone up. Because that's going to be the next... Excuse me, pig. Big problem. What did you kill that pig for? It was it was in the way. Standing in the way, mate. Just minding its own business. It was minding its own business in the way. Right? Okay? Jeez. Right, let's have a look at this then. Let's uh, get rid of all that. Go to my amazing box of many things and find ourselves, first of all, some obsidian. And I'm going to need some uh, pistons as well, because we're going to need to figure out exactly where this is going to be going. So, I guess, I don't really want to, but I'm going to have to smash all of this to bits. It's a shame, but it's got to be done. i got to smash all of these pistons. In fact, do I need to smash those pistons to bits? Yes, I do, because if we're going to be putting double piston extenders in there, they're going to need to come a block back. So the pistons will effectively be starting there. So let's smash all of these to bits. 
Let's smash all of that honey and slime to bits. Get rid of it all, guys. We're rebuilding. It's going to be bigger, better, faster, stronger, and probably not as good and fraught with problems. But, it, you know, they'll be our problems, so that's fine. So if they're going to be there, like, oh, I'm going to have to dig out a lot of the floor as well because all of that system was... Oh, jeez. I've lost connection to the internet, guys. Oh, there we go. It's back again. I've been having some problems with my internet recently. It's been a bit of a problem during live streams and things like that because it just occasionally just disconnects for a short second. Not long enough to actually kick me out of the game. Long enough to affect what I'm doing. And if I'm live streaming long enough for the people at the other end to miss a few of the things that I'm saying and get a bit of a, a buffering thing. So that's not ideal. Not ideal at all, really. But that's just one of those things. Let's dig out this area even more. Dig right down into the ground and give up, give ourselves... Pl you just put those blocks there. I know I did. I know I, I wasn't thinking, peeps. I wasn't thinking. I don't actually know how deep down we actually need to come here. And I think I'm probably going back way further than I need to. However, this point that we're finding ourselves on down here, this level, might not be a bad level to actually be building this thing. So let's just dig all of this out all the way to the front and then let's see what we can do in terms of building this thing which i'm going to be doing from memory because i've closed my uh, uh what's it called my test world now i don't have any screenshots but i'm pretty sure i can just about remember how it all works oh geez oh geez stop i'm trying to do an outro why have you got a helmet on Jeez. And thanks to a wonderful crash on my PC while I was transferring these files to a different folder ready to be edited, I've lost the end of this video. But don't worry, because there's only a couple of minutes of nonsense, so I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye!